The Age of Blaming Machines by Susan Hockfield. The war on cancer has cost 100 billion dollars and 8 million people die worldwide annually from it. Most of us know someone who died from cancer. We're only beginning to be able to treat some cancers if it is caught at an early stage of development. Personally, tragedy hit home when my father died of lung cancer at the age of 72. He smoked more or less his whole life. I smoked for 12 years. I'm currently off them 5 years. There's no way that I'll be back smoking again. I gave up by reading a book called The Easy Way to Quit Smoking by Alan Carr. I believe it's the easiest and most successful method to permanently quit smoking. The problem with cancer cells is that they reproduce. The reproduction of cancer cells isn't neutralized by the immune system. As the immune system believes it's a healthy cell, from its environment. The cancer cells invade the body and metastasize at different locations, which is why it's vital to get diagnosed early and treat before the cancer has had time to grow and spread, thus diminishing the odds of survival. I've mentioned the use of nail material in previous videos. I'm going to mention some more use of them. Nanomaterials have been used in two ways to kill bacteria. A titanium oxide and zinc oxide nanoparticles are being used in sunscreen to block off a cancerous causing rays. Nanoparticles have been used to detect cancerous cells in tumors that are just 5 mm wide. The traditional method used only detected cancer when a tumor is at least 10 mm wide. A new method which is similar to pregnancy test, saves the medical industry vast sums of money and moreover it is far more sensitive to detecting cancer. In addition, it can detect cancer cells many years in advance over the traditional methods, giving people a far better chance of survival. All of this is possible in 2021. In the years to come, injection of nanomaterials will successfully defeat cancer. Let us now look at technology that is able to amplify the brain and nervous system. People who are paralyzed have managed to move a robotic arm just by thinking. Thanks to the chip the size of baby aspirin inserted on the brain. The chip has hundreds of tiny wires that are inserted into the primary motor cortex. The chip itself is connected to a computer by a wire, which is capable of deciphering the signals coming from the brain, and then giving it feedback that are instructions. In the case of Cathy, who is paralyzed, she has a chip inserted into her brain and she is able to move her robotic arm to successfully pick up a latte and drink from it and then place it back on the table in front of her. The next generation of chips envisioned by engineers will be able to connect to a computer and will be no bigger than a grain of salt. They will be placed throughout the brain and will be able to record the signals and understand the brain's intent much more. After several generations of improvements, I can envision myself like Elon Musk being connected to the internet by these chips. I think members of society would be willing to have chips implanted in their brain as it makes everything much more convenient, from telepathic to perfect memory recall. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see similar videos.